We don't have a skin in mind today, so I thought, how about we do a vlog of what actually goes on behind the scenes? I haven't told Lions yet he's not here, but when he does get here, hopefully, he's down to do it. I started this thing an hour ago. It's now 2.15. Um, Lawrence still isn't here. I've got the script and everything so I can start recording, but I don't really want to do it behind the scenes without the other half of Indie Former here. I guess I'll give it another hour. So I said I'd give it an hour. It's been two, it's like four o'clock now, and I'm just gonna have to start. Now this may seem like a joke, and quite frankly, it is. Hey guys, Lawrence is fine, we just couldn't meet up this week so I thought doing a vlog would be fun. So you're going to have to get used to listening to my voice for the next couple of minutes. Let's get started. It's not every day that you see a game come out of Cameroon or showcase African culture. But Orion Legacy of the Corio Dan manages both feats. Set in a fantasy world that incorporates African lore, the game starts following the coup of Prince Enzo Corio Dan. With Enzo off the throne, the balance of the kingdom is lost, and so the game follows Enzo on his journey to reclaim power. Not only for his diplomacy, Enzo takes fighting into his own hands. Along with his skill as a swordsman, Enzo can channel the mystical powers of his ancestors in battle. All up, Orion is a beautiful 2D RPG that injects a flavour in diversity that is relatively void in video games. As soon as you say there's not a lot of African culture in games, it's only natural that the next game you see proves you wrong. And the journey down certainly does. The faces of the game's characters are inspired by old African masks, and development of the first chapters begun in Tanzania. As some will already know, the first two chapters have already been put out and have largely been heralded as great point-and-click adventures in the vein of classics from the genre such as Monkey Island and Grim Fandango. This Kickstarter is to get the third and final chapter made. Unsurprisingly, it's already met its target goal. Sometimes you just need to get to the point with the title of your game, and Pixel Noir certainly does. It combines noir tropes with the turn-based combat of an old-school JRPG, or as the developers explain it, it's Sin City meets Earthbound. The protagonist is a washed-up private eye scraping the bottom of the investigation barrel, but now a new mystery presents itself, promising redemption if solved. Recently, crossovers with other Kickstarter darlings, Shovel Knight and Heartforth Alicia, have been announced adding to the excitement of the game's release. Home Free is a fascinating action RPG that casts you as a lost dog in the city. Playing is your choice of what is more than a dozen breeds, you need to learn to survive and ultimately make your randomly generated city your home. The reason why this experience is shaping up so nicely is due to the level of care put into the design. You play from the perspective of a dog. You rise at the feet of humans and unable to understand their world. You can't speak. To eat you must beg, forage or steal. It's easier to interact with other dogs. In parks you can wrestle and play with friendly canines, but in dark alleyways you may overstep into the territories of less friendly hounds. Home Free will let us see the world from a whole new perspective. Its campaign already completed and funded, For the King is getting ready to share its adventure with you. The game is framed around two principal roguelike elements of permadeath and procedural generation, which effectively makes the game a series of different adventures. Each time you control a party alone, or alternatively, your friends can play the other characters cooperatively. This makes it a group roguelike similar to A Risk of Rain, yet it also has some strong RPG elements. 
This includes exploration on a hex-based grid and turn-based combat, both of which are highly number-based. A smart move is having combat, dungeon encounters and sea exploration off of the grid to provide some visual variety, kind of like how Hand of Fate mix up deck builders. We haven't spoken about how pretty the game is or how it builds story with a living world and persistent lore, but that's really just a testament to how well this game has been planned out. We can't wait for the king. Thanks for watching. My name's Josh, and we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.